Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry. I'm a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, I'm still battling a cold, but I'm still battling YouTube for you all. Okay, today we're gonna head back to some Drew Dernal, and I like this video that he made for us. It's called Controversial World History Takes. I love the hot takes in history, so let's see how hot they actually are. All right, make sure you've seen this video. Make sure you've subbed to Drew. He's a friend of the channel, great guy. This video will be linked originally down below. Okay, let's get started. All right, looks like first frame. Denmark surrenders to Germany in six hours. All right. Man, Northern Europe and World War II. Here we go. Surrenders to Germany in six hours. Sweden yeah, remains neutral. Yeah. Meanwhile, then there's Norway. Literally goes into... <laughs> yeah, they kept trying uh, to fight. Chaos mode. They were they, not going to go down easily. trying. This is specifically referencing them blowing up this German cruiser. But I was recently looking into this small team of Norwegians that blew up this nuclear facilities Story to keep time, Germany Drew. from getting a bomb. This was actually known as Operation Gunner Side, and I feel like it's not talked about nearly enough. Hilter was stupid to invade Russia in the winter, my that. brother in Christ, Barbarossa began in June. <laughs> this is a key detail I feel like a lot of people forget about. It didn't start in the winter, but it sure did end in the winter in a way. You know what? It it's still the same thing. It's like you're still going to attack them. You have to finish by winter. That's the deal. And then if you don't, you got to, I don't know, take a break. But then I know you're afraid to because then the Russians can rebuild and all that stuff. So it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter when you start, as long as you're fighting, don't fight them in the, uh, in the winter. Don't need to initially invade them in the winter. That'd be epically stupid. If he actually started in late winter, like going into spring, somewhere around February, who knows what would have happened? Maybe you should have attacked in the winter. Filipinos have- Good question. What do you think? If the timing had been different, so invasion happened in June for Operation Barbarossa, you go back to like, what, March maybe? You want to go to February? Uh, it's still tough. I don't know. Do you really think that would have a big difference? I'm going to fight the Spanish, the Americans, the Japanese, and rebel civilians in three separate wars in the span of less yep. than 50 years. Yeah. Filipinos and the Vietnamese have actually a lot more in common than I thought. Just replace the Spanish here with the French, and it's almost the exact same. Cultural pro. Well, yeah, I mean, he was talking about Vietnam. Vietnam had been fighting the, the, the Japanese off for millennia, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, Philippines, they her or they learned they learned imperialism. Go back to like 16th century with the Spanish, and then that was forever, of course. And then uh Japan takes over, and then uh then the United States actually it was the United States, and then Japan, then back to the United States. It's Appropriation gave us the French. What? The Franks what were a Germanic people. When they settled yeah. in Gaul, the local Roman population outnumbered their occupiers, so they appropriated Latin from them. Jesse, what the hell are you talking about? No, 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 don't Find stop. Let's keep going down this rabbit hole. I would have a dollar. Some random dude in the ninth century. Okay, let's just split the empire into France, Germany, and since we're feeling extra quirky today, create a territory in the middle to make them hate each other for the next 1,000 years and indirectly <laughs> escalate both Holy Roman wars. Empire? How could this possibly go wrong? <laughs> I've never actually realized that the fall of Charlemagne in a way caused all this chaos. That's I mean, true. this dude had his kids, man. That's what happens when you have kids and um, you've just grown that you've just raised them to be probably as power hungry as you are. Then it just literally falls all this. Apart. And then, of course, it had to be split up at some point and it all pretty much led to some really early forms of France, Germany and kind of Italy as well. A little if only feudalism. Had two sons instead of three. Can't even imagine how different things would be. Native Americans <laughs> before the 1600s. Then there's Native Americans after. the. Wait, what are they holding? Things would be Native Americans before the 1600s. Is it supposed to be holding something? What's Mo doing? Then there's Native Americans after the 1600s. Horses. I gotta tell ya, these things horses? are pretty terrific. And man oh man, did they end up loving horses. Certain Native Americans more than others. For example, Spaniards. Yeah, well, I was gonna say, you know the whole like planes riding horses, Native Americans thing? So much of that is like just like not true <laughs> because of how late the horse actually came. Uh, until it became expanded all the way up into again by by that I mean like the Great Plains of what's today the United States, but that was much shorter period of time than brings think. horses to the again, Americas. Horses not the native to tribe, America. cool. The Cree, cool. Navajo, of awesome. cool. They got it. Meanwhile, there's the Apache. I've referred to them as literally the Mongol Empire of America. If only they got their horses just a little sooner. If exactly. only they yeah, got yeah, their exactly. horses at the same time the Mongol Empire rose to power, they might have had just as great of an empire. It's hard. The whole area. By the way, I've done some travel vlogs. Um, I did it a couple years ago um, uh, around this exact area, the Four Corners region. 
where I uh, went to some of these places, um, really super remote remnants of these uh, villages and, uh, and overhangs. And it's amazing just to think about that these people were around during like the Mongol Empire. Check them out. Uh, look at, uh, what did I call it? I have a play this history teacher travels something uh, pretty cool. It was a lot of fun. I want to do more of that stuff. Same time the Mongol Empire rose to power, they might have had just as great of an empire. It's hard to say, but these dudes did not mess around. It's the American Civil War in 1862 at Yazoo River. We have the North with the combined fleets of two admirals. Meanwhile, the South with the Ram Arkansas. This was the River War, and the Arkansas was an ironclad ram. Basically, there was a time in history where just ramming suck. into other ships was an effective strategy again. <laughs> Good times. I'm sorry, Civil Civil War folks. Those ironclads, come on. Come on. Come on. America and Vietnam, 0.2 seconds after finishing the Vietnam War. Oh, we came together real fast. <laughs> well, that was always just the need case. this mutual enemy. It's actually crazy how fast that can cheer two places up. It's just more, more you know, the, 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 the proxy wars of the Cold War weren't just the United States. Soviet Union, you got China involved. Instagram reel that said something along the lines of women have no idea how often men in their lives think oh, about the Roman Empire. Mean. So I asked my husband, how often do you think about the Roman Empire? And without a missing beat, he said every day. Y'all, why? So th this is because I, I've noticed it's it's like a meme now, right? I'm seeing a pop all over the place. It's like, how often do you think of the Roman Empire thing? I saw when I uh, was uh, when this video came across, I also saw that. Drew just did, I think, a video on it. I don't know if he like investigated or was researching where this like how often you think of the Roman Empire thing. And I thought about covering it. Let me know if that's something you'd like like me like to see me cover. Is this whole Roman Empire thing? What is, what is that question? Why not? Why would I not think about one of the greatest empires in history every day? Drew is one of those you guys for not doing this. Uh, pretty much all says, ladies you know are now figuring out this is something that empire goes empire. on. Um, she asked her husband. And so she everyone's says, asking. Yes. Yeah, are, husband last are these women just doing it for content, you know though? This man said, he said, well, in some capacity, probably every day. That's Why? a great so way to put really it. Low on the woman. <laughs> That's a fantastic way to put it. It's crazy to me that in some capacity, everyone doesn't think about it's just, there was it's just so much influence. Even if you order like a Caesar salad. <laughs> no, I, mean, I don't even <laughs> think our the Caesar salad story. <laughs> uh, actually named for the chef that that made it. So I was disappointed when I heard that, though. I wanted to somehow to be related, related to Julius Caesar. Ains can comprehend how much of an impact is still there. Roman numerals, religion, astronomical observations. Law. I don't even think you can go outside your house in certain parts of Europe without seeing something Roman. The saying, Cleopatra lived closer to the U.S. than the building yep. of the pyramids. Those are old. Is still not as epic as saying, the building of the pyramids are closer to the U.S. than the building of Jericho. I don't know why I only just recently realized just how old Jericho actually is. It's, it's been happening. What like how many thousands of years ago? Like eight thousand? I mean, you're talking like eleven thousand years. Okay, ago. That's yeah. Crazy. Rome being the largest, oldest, I think, continuously inhabited city is kind of what they say about that. We see, we just they do so much archaeology and they find further and further down more evidence of people living, and not just that, but like walls and infrastructure and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Largest city in the ninth cent, Frankish Empire with 50,000 people. Oh, yeah. Time to party. Man, they're still celebrating. Keep it up. Rome Meanwhile, was weak, it then. was still not yeah, even exactly. close to uh, some of these other city populations. Yeah, Baghdad will get to a million. So will Chang'an. Multiple uh, Chinese cities are going to be a million there. People forget about that, how freaking populous Asia was. You got to remember when, when, um, when Western Rome fell, let's call it 476. Okay. They were at like a tenth of the population that they were uh, at the, the height of the population of the Roman Empire. A tenth of it. Ten percent. That's how much population, uh, you know, um, shrunk due to they had overcultivated their land. So there was food, food production. There was warfare, of course, migration, all that. Uh, it was still not even close to uh, some of these other city populations. <laughs> I, like I should have meme. said the ninth century here. That was really confusing that we were talking about currency for a second. I'm actually more surprised Baghdad outnumbered this city. The medieval period was a pretty rough time for Europe. 50 Baghdad's about to be completely annihilated in the 1200s, though. Like a million people, they're done. 250,000 civilians were killed by the Mongols. 
Uh, everyone else bailed. 8,000 people living on six acres. Mommy, my lungs hurt. Why does it smell of burnt rubber? I know, just a little more. And we are on the third floor. Cut to the Kowloon walled city. Yep. I swear my fascination with this thing peaks like it's, every it's three months. I always got to go down this rabbit hole. I have to admit, if it was still around to this day, I would absolutely go inside. To this day, there's still so many things inspired by it. And 84 years. Oh, that game was awesome. The stray cat one. Uh, Kowloon Walled City, such a fascinating story. I have, you know, watched videos on. I haven't really covered on this channel because it hasn't been as relevant, but check it out. It's a whole tiny, you know, as far as square footage goes, like totally encapsulated city. And they liked it that way. And people like liked it there, even though they had some issues and stuff like people. I don't know. It's, it's a fascinating outlier in history. Check out, just look up some videos on that. I cover one sometime if, if uh, a bunch of people, you know, want me to see, want to see me cover it, but look, look it up. It's all, it's, it's awesome and interesting. Year old German man was convicted after keeping a WW2 tank <laughs> in his basement. Not illegal. Um, there's only one thing to say here. Most normal 84 year old German man, I guess. What 84 year old German man people doesn't that own have tanks. one of these? Hey, not why was legal. he convicted though? You're not allowed? I want a German tank in my basement. I think the problem here is that um, he was a certain type of German. <laughs> By the way, props to Drew. He's he decorates like me, which means no decorations. Most decorated part of my house is my office right here with all the stuff in the back. I don't I don't have a thing on the wall. I think I have one clock downstairs. I am like minimalist when it does that. I love that. I love that meme with men. It's like, you know, how their their women are like, how can men live like this? And it's just like a chair, a TV, and nothing else. And I see those. I'm like, that's me. That's all we need. And that's all men need in life. Give us. A TV, internet, some video games, and a nice chair. We're good. Don't need anything else. <laughs> <laughs> this reaction. <laughs> if he was just a normal dude keeping a tank in his basement, I think that's a different situation. Every masterpiece has its cheap knockoff. I'm like so flabbergasted by this. I have never seen a meme like this in my life. And I've been doing this for like 10 years. Holy Roman Empire dubs? I mean, it's Roman Empire. It's a long whole, time the coming. Holy Roman Empire sucks, are the missing guys. link Come on. between Austrians and humans, says this German guy. I like pigs. Dogs like- Wait, between Austrians and humans? Link between Austrians and humans, oh. says this German guy. I like pigs. Dogs look up Which to Churchill us. Say. Cats look down to us. Pigs treat us like equals, says Winston Churchill. I cannot prevent the French the from Gaulle. being French, says Charles de Gaulle, the <laughs> former leader of France. Wait, so all of these leaders just bashing on their own countries? I, I'm just in shock. Here we no, Basically, they're just not apologizing for the awful parts of each of... The, the cultures and societies. That's basically what they're saying. Go France getting a medal. Once again, time to celebrate. Oh yeah, fun times. Let's go. Meanwhile, France actually ranking last and this is specifically resistance movements in WW2. <sighs> Ooh, France, when someone mentions WW2 resistance. I don't know why this is just making me think my great grandma would <laughs> have absolutely <laughs> disagreed with this. That's I don't good. know why she told me France like fought hard there. I don't know. I was like a little kid when she told me this. Well, We're not even French. Actually, I think she was German. <laughs> if Oppenheim they had their resistance movement did it do much I don't know I mean it, it took till D-Day let's be honest all right, here we go. Heimer wouldn't have created the atomic bomb. Imperial Japanese would have launched the bubonic plague on the USA. Meanwhile, my weeb history teacher, <laughs> I would actually be in shock if he didn't know this. Like, what history teacher doesn't know that Japan was looking to harness the bubonic plague? I, I thought that was, like, pretty common knowledge. No, 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 Drew. No, Drew. It's not a thing. There are also no weeb teachers. Okay, that's like a filtration question. You don't make it through, like, your university coursework and your student teaching process and your interview work, they're not letting weebs in, all right? They're not. They're not, right? Please? They're not, right? Right? Ooh, look at this cute outfit. Look at that Renaissance era armor. Tasteful flooding of it. Oh my God. She even has a Biden hander. Oh yeah, these do make everything oh look gosh. a little bit more epic. Let's see Paul Allen's Renaissance era armor. Frankenstein's monster <laughs> in media. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the books, oh, Frankenstein, be not equitable. Wow, I don't even know if I can say these words. And trample upon me alone, to whom thy justice it's a and sad even book. thy clemency and affection is most due. The hell did I just even read? Frankenstein is more intelligent than I am. Sorry, Frankenstein's yeah. monster. That's the correct name for it. My go. day is ruined. He's pro. No, you got it. Yeah, read it. 
Frank, by the way, the Frankenstein book is nothing. If, if all you know is like the universal, um, old Hollywood movies about Frankenstein, it's not anything like what it is. It actually is like a, like a sad story. It's not what you think at all. It'd take me too long to explain, but, uh, check it out sometime. Very readable. I read it in high school. Probably thinking about other girls. Well, Roman there Empire. were once Greeks living in Afghanistan. Holy yeah. crap. That would keep With me Alexander. up at night, too. I never realized that either. I mean, they were also kind of living in the outer edges of India as well. Alexander's empire was no joke. Me as a yeah, Alexander was hooking up, you know, and, and getting all his commander stuff hooked up with like Bactrian princesses and all that stuff. Yeah. Medians, Bactrians, all that. In the outer edges of India as well. Alexander's empire was the no war. joke. Me, as a kid, realizing that my blue-collar life in the 1990s is more comfortable than the life of Little medieval kings, kids. but I can never be as happy as medieval kings because I can't pillage Scotland. It's one of those existential crises I think every kid has to go through. I know I certainly oh, did. You'll never Scotland. understand <laughs> my pain, says the USA. Meanwhile, there's the nation of Chile. We both agree the 9th of September is a pretty depressing pressing day but definitely for some different reasons what's crazy is they do not teach us about this in the united states american women no, in Latin american history is and, and especially south american history is way down the list unfortunately in a um in in, in a regular probably in like a, a regular world history class probably not going to hit that hard especially once you get to like that time period because moving on to global issues usually by then Probably have to take like an AP class or something uh, to to get that, just for time's sake, pretty much. All right. In twenty, we did it. We got the right to vote. Yep. Meanwhile, Wyoming grandmas who'd been doing right. it since the eighteen sixties. They did it way earlier. Yeah, definitely weren't that impressed. Dude, Wyoming, Wyoming was the first state based, by far to allow yes. women to vote. Ooh, a based hypothetical Wyoming. flag for if Czechia and Slovakia came together in a union. Whoa! Would you look at that? What a great way to integrate both countries into one flag. Obviously, Czechia is represented here, but Slovakia as well. How cool! If all by the way, we need we need to commend the Czechs and Slovaks for their amicable separation without it being as freaking bloody as like Yugoslavia or something like that. Like, like good job. Good job. Only this place existed Thank at you. some point in history. Bomber plane pilots. Hmm. This bamboo stockpile has been here for ages. A Taj Mahal bamboo stockpile? Look at that. The Taj the Mahal. Okay, I'll be honest. I don't even well, know what I scaffolding. read there. Uh, basically, this is referring to India building fake Taj and Mahals in defense of bomber enemy planes against the yeah, Japanese and also it. against Pakistan. Oh. Yeah, I did a lot of that. Yeah, it was, yeah, the scaffolding there. So, um. Try to protect uh, world heritage sites like that. The scaffolding made it look like there was just a bamboo stockpile. That way they keep this iconic building super safe. Yep. This guy saying, so you don't plan on doing anything about one of your phone operators sabotaging my business. Meanwhile, the Bell Telephone Company, that's right. Then here he goes inventing a way to automate telephone calls and make the entire phone operator industry True. go obsolete. Oh, well, that kind of backfired. I believe this is referring to apparently back in the day you'd have to ask yeah. a telephone operator to transfer for your call to wherever it was trying to go. I mean, I'm old. I'm not this old, though. Like, I don't... I'd never experienced that. I don't th think I've ever actually called a telephone operator before. Oh, in 1963... Look, I did as a kid, and it was mostly like a prank. You know what I mean? It was mostly like a prank. It was like... I remember operators being a thing. Is it still a thing? Has anyone tried? Somebody try and put a comment down below. It used to just be you call zero. The operator. A lot of it was... They kept it going for a long time, long after, you know, like needing to use those, uh, what do I call them, switchboards or whatever to connect the calls. But they kept them, especially for, um, especially people that might be disabled or something like that, or have, they might have trouble dialing, something like that. So you'd call and then you'd say, hey, I'm trying to reach this number. They would do it. That's why it went on so long. But does it still go on with like satellite? You know, now that we're using cell phones. Probably not, huh? The Somebody last checked. switchboard operator for a hand-cranked phone would occur. Norway will never give in to the no-no Germans. I would sooner go into <laughs> exile than surrender you and would advocate rather than recognize Quisling as prime minister. Meanwhile, the other uh, Nordic countries... Uh, yep. Well... Uh, I mean... Denmark Norway got taken out in six hours. Officially surrender. Neutral. In Finland... 
Uh, maybe we sh just shouldn't go there. And big thanks to my patrons. Well, they were fighting the Soviets. They, their deal was the Soviets, right? They had to pick the worst of two enemies there. <laughs> All right, final thoughts. Hey, that was a great compilation. That was one of my favorites, if not maybe my favorite from Drew there. Um, good job getting all those. Those were cool because they, you know, a lot of them were, they of course were funny, but then um, a lot of them were like, they were pretty deep that way without being too pretentious. You know, some history memes are like way pretentious. It's like, they almost like don't want you to understand just to show the, the meme maker just wants like people to see how smart they are. You know, it, you know, you know what I mean by those, but that was, that was a good set there. I, I really like what Drew's been doing recently with a lot more like history stuff and expanding on things it's been uh it's been really good i like what he's doing there so all right drew fans covered some more stuff and i always like doing that um with that though the original is down below make sure you saw that support drew and then come on back i've covered a bunch of these kind of meme videos i've done covering memes myself and other people's memes just go to my website or go to my playlist or whatever search and mr terry memes or something i can find hundreds by now all right so we'll see y'all next time bye